Riot have announced that they are laying off 11% of their total workforce or 530 people to be exact. Riot Forge and Legends of Runeterra were highlighted as two errors that will see immediate effect in their announcement. What this means for us as gamers is that Bandle Tale, which is releasing in just over a month, will be the last game that comes out of Riot Forge, so no more single player story driven experiences from third party studios will be coming out of Riot, at least for the foreseeable future. And as Riot doesn't really make single player games themselves anyway, we possibly won't get any more of those single player experiences for a very long time. It also means that Legends of Runeterra is shifting away from active development and will only work on the path of Champions mode going forward. And whilst it's not super clear exactly what this means, it's very likely we'll be getting far fewer new cards in the game and as a result far fewer new pieces of artwork and ultimately a lot less lore from that game as a result of these changes. I cannot overstate how awful this news is for fans of the League of Legends universe and the wider Runeterra IP as a whole. Riot Forge gave us several games that deepened the existing lore of Runeterra and explored the characters that we already know about, giving us much deeper insights into who they were. Such as Willump being there when the Watchers broke free from the ice, Lux founding a city that's a safe space for mages in Demacia, or Misfortune slowly becoming the very same tyrant that she struggled so hard to overthrow. Legends of Runeterra would often expand the lore, giving us new stuff to look at, and has done a ton of work to really fresh out what Runeterra is actually like when it comes to the factions and their cultures. And it's this stuff that made me a big fan of League of Legends in the first place, largely because of the Ruined King game from Riot Forge, which I picked up after watching Arcane on Netflix. And sure, I already played League occasionally at that time, but it was just a MOBA that some of my friends played. I actually played a lot more Dota 2 back then, and League was just not even in my top five games at all. But it was the lore of Rune Terror that turned me into a passionate fan and a regular player of League of Legends, so much so that I started making YouTube videos about them, which eventually helped me get a job in the gaming industry, which kickstarted a career shift for me in game development, which is a whole other story for another time. The point is, I have a very soft spot for the parts of Riot that work on that narrative content, and we've just lost two of the biggest parts of Riot that generate that narrative content. And there's no replacement for either of these in sight. And based on the layoffs that we're seeing, we probably won't get a replacement either. One of those laid off is principal narrative writer and industry legend Graham McNeil, who has worked on so much good stuff for Riot, including Riot's MMO. Another key figure to be let go is Macy Yang, a principal concept artist on the world building team whose work has literally defined the visual style for Noxus, Demacia, Ionia, Shreema, basically everywhere on Runeterra. And without her, we just would not have any of the cool visual stuff that we have today in Legends of Runeterra or in any of the comics or in any any of the cinematic. Her work has been central to the Rune Terror IP and its visual style, and now she's gone too. Both of these people held senior positions in Riot, which is not a good sign for the more junior staff in those teams either. Whilst we don't know everyone who's been laid off, we do know some. We've got Elias Inati, who's a writer and a content producer, Nicholas Werner, who's a narrative editor, John Chambers, who's a principal narrative editor, Ian Martin, who's a senior narrative designer, Sabrina Futch, who's a narrative editor for comics and cinematics. She worked on the exceptional Katarina comic that came out last year. We've got Sammy, who's a creative producer, Eric Kinnett, who's a senior principal artist, George Almeyer, who's a concept artist, Rachel Cross, who's a concept artist, Audrey Axt, who's a concept artist, Julia Shi, who's a visual story development artist, Crystal Chang, who's an illustration lead, Sean Tay, who's an art lead, and Natasha Nilsson, who's a character artist, and that's just a few. There's a ton of people who bring the world to life, either through world building, narrative design, concept art, or production support that have all been let go. And Riot talked a lot in their announcement about how the company's not been focused enough, and they want to get back to focusing on the right things, and they view the cuts as a way to do that, to get back to what's important. But by cutting so many people in and around world building, Riot have just told us that narrative and world building is not important to them. And if that's the case, what does Riot have for me as a player going forward? Because it might not be important to them, but it is to me. It's not the gameplay of League of Legends that keeps me around spending money on that game. What keeps me around is the world that all the aforementioned people have crafted for us over time. That stuff is so important to me as a player that despite the in-game toxicity, the one-shots, the frustrating balance, the condescending tone of communication from the design team, the asinine comments from Velkos mains who don't know how their own champion works because they're wrong. It's frustrating to get yelled at when they're just wrong about what they're talking about. A client that runs like garbage, the endless audio bugs I have, the exploitative token monetization methods, and $200 skins. 
I still boot the game and spend money on it because I just super like it when Misfortune and Gangplank meet in lane because they've got history, you know? Like it's just a cool experience for me as a lore based player and if that stuff goes away then I've lost the biggest reason that I boot the game in the first place. I can hope that we'll get more short stories on the universe page, but with a lot of the narrative team gone, as I just explained, I'm not really holding out hope, especially as we only got one short story last year and the whole year. It's not looking good. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.